everyone for coming. Uh, we're really excited about this symposium this year. This is the uh, the kickoff of the I2B2 Transmark Foundation. Uh, it's a recent project. I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview. I see Sean has done that. I'll go quickly so I'm not too redundant. If there are spots you want me to spend more time on, just let me know and we'll do that. Um, <clears throat> One of the key things that we developed in our concepts of thinking about I2B2 and Transmart is, is thinking about how we present this uh, as a, an integrated uh, approach uh, to precision medicine. And from that perspective, uh, the I2B2 group and the Transmart group got together to think about what the, the similarity and the overlap is between what we do. And I think the opportunity that was created is by having a common data model shared between the two platforms, which is because Transmart was in fact developed from the I2B2 data model. So uh, translational research, for those of you who aren't aware, is, is really a, a basic research function. It, it's where uh, pharmaceutical and biotech scientists try to use uh, basic research knowledge and uh, knowledge of, of what happens in clinical research to identify key biomarkers, to uh, understand how drugs function, uh, and to build and design better clinical trials. Um, what the key goal of that is to improve outcomes uh, on the clinical side, and as we know, uh, about 1 in 10,000 compounds uh, successfully make it through the drug development process. Uh, and when we look at, uh, at success rates, even in clinical trials, uh, success rates are about 20% overall. So this is a very important thing for developing new therapies. On the healthcare side, um, what we're really concerned about is how do we improve outcomes using clinical data and clinical research. And the key goal here is to treat patients more effectively. Uh, if we can better identify and understand their uh, underlying disease mechanisms, uh, and we can identify treatments that are effective for those disease mechanisms, we can improve outcomes for patients. And what our goal is, is to bring these two fields together, and to bring them together with an integration of technology, an integration of data, and an integration of people. Uh, one of the things I was really struck by when we had our symposium here last year is uh, how little overlap there is between the translational research community and the clinical research community. One would expect, since the fodder for much of this is, is working with patients in the clinic, uh, that there be a large overlap. Uh, and what we intend to build is, in fact, that very large overlap. That is the, the ethos and the mission for the Transmart, ITV2 Transmart Foundation. And if I stutter with the foundation names, it's because everybody's a little bit new to it. But our goal is to connect these domains uh, and to do that not just simply in terms of thinking about how we connect translational research with clinical research, but also how we connect academia, government, nonprofits, uh, industry together into a, a single integrated group uh, that can use uh, the same technologies, working on the very same data uh, to really improve outcomes for patients, all the way from, as I2B2 says, from the bench uh, to the bedside and back again. So that's really the key goal. And uh, uh, I quickly stole this quote from, uh, from whitehouse.gov uh, for precision medicine. This is when, when it was up there. I don't know if it's up there anymore. I haven't checked lately. But um, I think the, the key elements of, the, of precision medicine is to be able to more effectively treat each individual patient based upon the mechanism of their underlying disease uh, and our knowledge and experience in treating uh, that disease uh, condition. And so that's really what we want to, to really focus on from a technological perspective. When we think about the, the role of Transmart in the precision medicine, it's really about uh, that translational research space. Uh, Transmart, if you're not familiar, is uh, an open source translational science uh, data warehouse. Uh, this is a platform that is used by uh, most pharmaceutical and biotech companies to load their various uh, interventional and observational clinical trial data into to facilitate their biomarker discovery uh, work. Um, it's a, an open source solution. It's been widely adopted. People use it for collaborating. Uh, there are a lot of available data sets for people to work and collaborate on. Uh, at the foundation, we distribute over 130 uh, data sets in transmark ready format that can be loaded together, integrated, and, and worked with uh, directly. It is also used quite a bit for data sharing. Um, groups like the Michael J. Fox Foundation, uh, uh, working with, with a number of other groups, uh, share their data sets in transmark formats. So, for example, if you're a biotech researcher, you want access to, to ADME and VERB2 and BioFind. Uh, those are data sets you can get from the Michael J. Fox Foundation. We sign the right forms. It's all in Transmart format. You can directly integrate it with your data in Transmart today. So it's been a very successful platform from that R&D space. Um, but our goal has been to, to work that into, into the clinical research space. If you're not familiar with Transmart, um, it basically follows a very similar uh, user interface paradigm as I2B2. Uh, you can select uh, from your various uh, 
clinical studies, you can select cohorts of patients, you can do biomarker analyses. Uh, Transmart understands the statistical analyses that you want to apply to different data sets. So you don't have to have a statistician sitting next to you to figure out you know, which particular uh, method you use, the platform knows. Uh, and then it can do the analysis and present that to you. So this is a, a one-stop shop uh, where uh, scientific end user can identify the data that they're interested in, select the various cohorts, do the biomarker analysis, and get the results. Um, some of the more interesting things that have come out of Transmart recently are things like genetic-based cohort selection. So we know we can select cohorts based upon phenotypes. That's been done for some time. Uh, but can we take genotypes and genetic variant data and select cohorts from there? In fact, this is a, a new addition to Transmart in our 16.2 release. So uh, you can select cohorts based on phenotype. You can select cohorts based on genotypes. And when you can do that, you can do extensive analysis of the phenotypes and other molecular markers within that genotype-defined population. On the clinical side, uh, I think everyone here is, is familiar with ITV2, uh, but ITV2 is, is the, the main uh, open source clinical research data warehouse. Uh, I think one of the things that will surprise people is when we talk about the numbers of patients in a Transmart instance, uh, 40,000 is a big number. Uh, when we talk about uh, patient data that's in ITV2, 40 million is a small number. Um, so these are, are interesting elements of the scale. And in fact, when we sat down, uh, Sean and Zach and Brian Apey and, and others and myself, uh, uh, several years ago, when we had this concept of bringing the, the groups together, uh, the thing that really impressed me was the number of patients uh, whose data is in an I2V2 instance somewhere in the world. And today that's estimated as somewhat over 300 million patients whose data lives in I2V2. That is a resource that the, the entire medical community, including the research community, need to be taking advantage of as we do drug discovery and biomarker discovery. Um, if you look at, uh, at I2B2 data, the thing that impresses me, this is uh, comes from Paula Biak's hospital in Paris. Um, you look at a, a relatively small hospital, they have uh, 600,000 patients uh, in their database. And when you look at it overall, they have nearly uh, 100 million observations on these patients. Uh, it's an enormous amount of data, it's an incredible resource, and it's one that we need to make more effective use of. In fact, when I talk to, uh, to people in the I2B2 community, one of the things that they're most interested in are some of the statistical uh, analyses and analytics that are in Transform and looking to apply those directly to, to patient data that's in I2B2. That's one of the main reasons that we're here. Um, when you look at, at basic I2B2 elements, the, the key concept behind I2B2 is to be able to go into those patient data, identify uh, patient cohorts based upon phenotypes, uh, and then to be able to do some analysis on those identify patients that, uh, that fit those particular classes, and in fact, look at the interventions that they've been given and what the outcomes are. So there's a lot of a, a longitudinal uh, data aspect. One of the key things I think that's important in I2B2 is following patient consent. Uh, this is something that Transmart has not had to do uh, because working with data coming from well-structured and defined interventional and observational clinical trials. So there are a lot of capabilities that are synergistic across the platforms. But our key goal is, is to bring uh, the platforms together, bring the people together, bring the data together uh, into a single community effort uh, so we can really facilitate precision medicine. I think this is really critical. You know, Zach, I think this has been a, a true thought leader in this space. We're really pleased uh, to be working with him uh, at the ITV2 Transmart Foundation and to be associated with this meeting in precision medicine. That's a fantastic thing. But from our, our goal, as I said, is bringing these things together. And what we think this provides our, our sets of new opportunities. Let me paint a, a little picture for you. If we think about what the, the true advantage of open source is, is that open source software can be advanced by any research group that chooses to work on that platform. The software is free, uh, you can take and use it. It's obviously not always free to use because you have to have infrastructure and support. That's one of the things the foundation is here to help with. But your ability to integrate is incredibly facilitated. And in fact, we have a great example of that in the latest development cycle uh, with, with the Transmart platform. And that we, we went through and did an integration with Transmart and uh, Arvados. Arvados is a, a new open source platform that came out of George Church's lab. Um, it's a federated genome analysis platform used by uh, the Wash Genome Center, Sanger Center, um, uh, by uh, the Grove here as well. Uh, and what it enables you to do is, in fact, 
build an analysis um, of, of what you want to understand and know in some genome data, send it out onto a federated network and analyze the data sitting in place, and then aggregate the results coming back. And one of the things that we're working to do with that platform is in fact enable a federated network of ITB2 transport instances, which can use a common work workflow language and can integrate phenotype and genotype by doing analyses out there and working with those data and distributing them. So the ability to integrate technologies is greatly facilitated. No proprietary platform uh, can cover such a breadth of capability, can integrate so effectively, and can, as we are with I2B2 and Transmart, and we'll hear from Paul later, uh, can really bring together platforms, people, and capabilities uh, that, that just can't be accomplished by proprietary efforts. And so the I2B2 Transmart Foundation is here. We're modeling ourselves on the, the successful efforts at Apache Software Foundation and Linux Foundation. We've worked with the founders of those groups, uh, and uh, we're really applying that here into the, uh, the scientific research space. So the, the key aspects of the foundation uh, that I want to share with you and I want to, to drive through your thinking as we go forward is, is really based on our, our vision and mission. Uh, our vision at a very high level is, is to realize the promise of precision medicine uh, and to reduce that to practice uh, through our mission, which is integrating uh, not just I2B2 and Transform, but many different types of platforms and capabilities to produce uh, an open source ecosystem uh, that has patient data with research data, uh, clinical data coming together with, with physicians and scientists, communication at, at uh, symposia like this where people can get together, share ideas, and then come together as we will on Thursday into groups that we can use to advance the platform, advance the capabilities, and work more collaboratively together. So this is our, our vision and mission. Uh, we think that this is, is, is the right community, the right space, the right time, uh, and we're pretty excited about it. When we think about the foundation, uh, what is an open source software foundation? What do we do? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, we're focused around three organizing principles. Um, the mission, which is the integration of, of clinical and translational research to enable precision medicine. Uh, the platform, which is the key open source technologies that allow us to bring these capabilities together. And that's an open source ecosystem. It's not just I2B2 and Transmart, it's Smart and Shrine and uh, Arvados and, and uh, R and, and a number of other key capabilities, Galaxy and others. So our goal is to continue to build out this open source ecosystem to be able to cover the breadth and expanse of this space of precision medicine. And the third key aspect is the community. In fact, this is the heart of what uh, the foundation is geared to do is that all the work that happens on I2B2, Transmart, Arvados, R, Galaxy, and others, we don't do it, you guys do it. And what we're here to do is help enable you to do that, provide you with the tools and capabilities and, and infrastructure to do that, but you're the innovators. And what we wanna do is bring you together so you can collaborate. Uh, when you have these great ideas to help facilitate that, one of the things that we do is we write grant support letters, we help people identify different grants and opportunities, we participate in grants to help people bring things forward. We see this innovation and this collaboration as being a critical part of what we do. And this is not about us, it's about you. And it's about bringing this community together. So what I hope we'll have today uh, and we'll have on Thursday are some excellent discussions bringing people together that may have not met before, uh, that have some really interesting ideas, that have different sets of skills and capabilities. Uh, and to bring you together in the context of the infrastructure and platforms that we have uh, so that we can accelerate your innovation by giving you a great background and some great support. Uh, the foundation overall, um, we do a couple of key things from a, an operational perspective. Uh, one of the foremost is managing code governance. One of the things you know about open source software is it can be a real wild, wild west. And uh, if uh, I, I, I was going to put in a slide here, which is... Uh, it's a, it's a beautiful slide. Peter Rice presented this a few years ago. But it's a, it's a, a dog sled uh, with a mushroom, and it's connected to a bunch of cats, okay? And what it says is that, you know, why there isn't cat sledding. And, and the key thing there is, is it's really true, is if we're all running in different directions, we never get anywhere, you know? And so the key thing is, is we all have to pull the same direction. That's what code governance is about is we get together uh, in project management committees, we look at what we have as roadmaps, we concentrate our resources on a direction, 
and we move the platform and the community in that direction. That's why it's important that it be a community-wide effort. This is not, you know, this is not the foundation or key developers just sitting back and saying, well, here's where we're going to go, and you guys don't have a choice. This is a participatory uh, effort. So the foundation organizes project management committees, uh, key developers and leaders in the space, led by the project, uh, by the, the uh, PMC chair, uh, define the roadmap for the platform, define what the contributions are, define the quality standards, and in fact, develop each and every release. And the release is based upon what the project management committee, as a community representative, uh, defines for that platform. And so it's really important that if you're interested and you're working in these things, that you get involved and you participate. If you're familiar with the Apache Software Foundation, we have followed their model quite significantly here. Uh, one key difference for us is that unlike many projects in Apache where you have uh, developers who are full-time supported by Intel or HP or IBM, uh, we often have people coming from grants. Uh, we have also have people coming from vendors that are not the software developers themselves, but they manage those software developers and they can, they can uh, bring together, uh, pull together the resources that can help move the platform forward. And so this is one thing you'll hear a lot about over the next two days or three days. Uh, and what I want you to think about is where you can get involved. The code governance is really the key critical piece. Um, the other key thing for us is, is community development. Uh, so we have a lot of activities. Uh, Rudy here, uh, you know, as our VP of marketing, uh, really helps to organize uh, bringing people together for different symposia. We just had a bunch of people together at BioIT World. We have this, we'll have our annual meeting in the fall. Um, we'll work with you on various user group meetings, etc. Our goal is to help bring people together to facilitate that and to help facilitate uh, interactions. We also uh, collect and, and distribute open data. If you have data sets that you would like to have distributed, uh, we have a great effort. Uh, Rudy also uh, co-chairs the, the content committee uh, with Julie Bryant, who's one of our board members. Uh, one of the key things that they do is, is identify data sets that are of general use to the community, and we, we QA, QC those, and we make those available for easy install. And so we've done that quite a bit in the Transmart uh, platform. Our goal is to find those patient data sets that we can share in ways that we can share those with ITV2 as well. Uh, we also work with private data sets there. So if you have private data that you need to do that, but you want to facilitate collaboration, we can help you. Uh, we also focus very hard on attracting new resources and new capabilities to the, to the platforms. We want to have this as an open source community be very broad and diverse. We want people to make investments here, not just grant investments, but commercial investments, hardware investments, uh, investments of, of marketing and sponsorship. The more people we bring together, the more effort we bring here, the more critical mass we develop, the faster we grow, and the more innovation we bring. Um, we bring the community together for events like this, I said as well. And then the other thing that we think is that in an ecosystem like this, this is not just about academic science. Um, it's about industrial science, it's about vendors, it's about uh, very support uh, all across the spectrum. And so we provide marketing opportunities for people to get their message out to the community and to participate with the community uh, in these kinds of events. Those are really important. Um, the key goals that we've established uh, for now uh, is to establish and maintain the foundation software products as the preferred data sharing platforms for research and precision medicine. We think this is, is in fact, where we're starting from, uh, but our goal is to cement that position and continue to move it forward. Uh, we want to link academic, nonprofit, uh, healthcare, and commercial research efforts together uh, by bringing groups together in multidisciplinary groups and having you know, lots of interaction. Uh, we want to align and grow a vibrant developer network. One of the challenges to software development in our field is that you know, developers often come in, they'll work here for three or four months on something, and then move on to another project. Uh, we want to have a, a growth of a developer base that can continue to grow and build a platform that has a sustainability to it, uh, where these developers really become steeped in these platforms and can move them forward more, more quickly. There's one thing that I've learned about software development is that you know, the, the difference between an average software developer and, and an excellent software developer is not 50 or 100 percent. It's five or 10 or 20 times. Uh, and what we want to do is really facilitate the development of the, of the developers in our, our field and attract those really sharp developers to come work on, on I2B2 and Transmart and to stay here and continue to work on I2B2 and Transmart. That's how we'll push these platforms forward. The other is uh, for us is, is to reduce barriers. 
by bringing people together, by bringing uh, vendors into the room, by continuing to focus on development of technology, we're lowering the barriers to working together. Uh, and also, if we can help attract funding to the space, that's another way of lowering the barriers of working together. So these are our key goals. Um, we can talk about why. I think I'm going to probably keep speeding up one minute. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I can, I've got another two hours of slides here. No, but I, I won't go through all of them. Um, but one of the things I think that is important for us to focus on is, is what is the ecosystem? Uh, the ecosystem today is, is a small part of what the ecosystem will be tomorrow and the next day. Uh, as we continue to grow, one of the things that, that we've noted is that there's been a lack of, of focus and a lack of collaboration in open source software in the sciences. And when we're seeing some, some areas where people have come together on this, uh, I think one of the great things is in the astronomy field. Or seeing people come together and share data and work together with shared uh, shared platforms, uh, we've seen science move forward very very quickly. And, and what we want to do is provide that same thing for the biological sciences, particularly healthcare and precision medicine. This is the beginning. I hope to see this ecosystem continue to grow uh, and expand. And as we reduce it to, to individual components, you know, to see a lot more more things happening. I think Sean told you a little bit about what we're doing with OMOP and I2B2, which I think is very exciting. Uh, one of the nice things is when we bring something like OMOP to I2B2, it's, it's much easier to bring it to Transmart, and Avados, and other platforms. That's really key. I think Sean took you a little bit through the governance model. I'm not going to belabor this. Uh, but the governance model is set up so that the community, you, the members, people that are key contributors to the platform, key stakeholders in the community, determine the leadership of the foundation and the direction of the foundation. And the way you do that is once a year you get together and elect new key stakeholders. Uh, we want this membership to be an honor that is reserved for those that are really committed to the goals of the, of the community. Uh, but when you're elected as a new member, what you do uh, six months later is participate in the nomination and election of board members. And so that's one of the key ways that you, you place the direction of the, the foundation to move it forward. Board members in the foundation have a two-year term. Uh, we have 50% expiring each year. So every year, you, the membership, will elect uh, half of the board members coming forward. You will nominate them, and they will come from the membership itself, and you will participate in the elect election of those, and you will elect those new members. That's a very important responsibility, and it's one that I hope people really take home with them as we, as we push out this program. Uh, I think uh, Sean went a little bit through the board of directors. Um, there's key elements to the governance, which I think are important. Uh, we'll go through quickly. Um, the leadership team, I don't know if you had a chance to introduce the leadership team, uh, Sean. No, and I didn't do the board of directors. Oh, you didn't do the board of directors? Well, I'll go back. So one of the key things that we did in bringing the two foundations together, the I2B2 Foundation and the Transmart Foundation, was to pull from for key leaders from both governance bodies. Uh, and we wanted to do that so that we have that vision and leadership uh, from both those efforts to integrate it with the governance board. So from I2B2 Foundation, uh, Zach Mahani is our co-chair. Everybody knows Zach, he's over here. Um, Sean Murphy uh, is on the board from, from I2B2 Foundation. Uh, Paula Viak. I don't know if Paul is in here yet. Uh, Paul Aviak is on the board. Uh, and Russ Waitman, I think we saw Russ back there as well. Uh, from the Transmark Foundation, uh, our co-chair is uh, Gil Oman, coming from the University of Michigan. Uh, we have Matteo Di Tommaso. I know Matteo wasn't going to be able to make it. He is the acting CIO at Biogen uh, today. Um, we have Brett Davis. Did Brett make it? Uh, Brett Davis is the manager of the Converge Health Unit at Deloitte, uh, which in fact is one of the main commercial supporters of I2B2 and Transmart in the community. And then we have Jim Serum. I know Jim was flying up from Philadelphia, so uh, he probably got caught in the transit issues. And so this is the sort of the balance representation between the two foundations. But we wanted to bring some independence to this as well. And so uh, we also have uh, Christelle Danielle, I don't know if Christelle is here, uh, who's joining us, uh, as well as Julie Bryant uh, here from the US. And I don't think Julie was able to make this either. Um, we have one open uh, board seat that we're currently working to fill, uh, and as I said, that uh, we'll elect new members uh, to add to our seat in the membership uh, effort this fall, and then the members will, will vote in a new set of, of directors um, 
basically, I think it's five directors will be elected in the next cycle, um, next spring. So that's uh, something to be prepared for. Uh, the leadership team, uh, overall, we're, we're sort of in an operational leadership and a strategic leadership elements. Uh, I'm the executive director uh, running the operation. Uh, our VP of operations is Diane Keto. Okay. Uh, our VP of finance is, is Steve Johnson. Uh, and our VP of marketing is Rudy Potenzone. Zone. And uh, this is a team that has extensive uh, industrial and academic experience. You know, Steve has been a, a CFO of a public company. Um, and we, we have a, a team that is, is bringing a lot of effort here. But I'll tell you, our, our model here is that none of us uh, work full time on this, but our full time might be a little different than other people's. Um, I think 35 hours is like considered half time. But, uh, uh, but the goal that we have with the team is to bring very experienced people that have a lot of experience from industry and, and academia uh, together on a part time basis to really facilitate the mission of the foundation. Uh, and that's what we do. Uh, on our, our strategic leadership, uh, we have uh, four officers. We have our chief scientific officer, Brian Athey. I don't think Brian was able to make it. They have a big event at, at Midas. He's the uh, co-director of the Michigan Institute for Data Sciences. Uh, our chief medical officer is Sean Murphy. Uh, our chief technology officer is E.K. Go. I don't know if E.K. was able to make it either. Uh, and our chief information officer is Paula Diak uh, as well. So this is the team. Uh, it's a small uh, team. Uh, it's, it's a part-time and, and largely volunteer team, uh, but it's here to help organize and push things forward, and we're here to work with you to, to make things happen. You know, again, from our perspective, we can help organize and, and, and facilitate and provide infrastructure, but you guys are the ones that are doing the work. Uh, did you go through project management committees at all? So the project management committee is really the critical uh, focal governance component for us, and, and I, I can't belabor this enough. Um, when you're involved in a project management committee, you get together on a regular basis, typically every two weeks. Uh, you set the, the roadmap, the release schedule, the quality standards uh, for the code base. And, and in that process, uh, Rudy is our, our current uh, P PMC chair for the Transmart product. Uh, that PMC has, I think it's about a dozen people on it. Uh, they're just pulling together the 17.1 uh, release. Uh, but these are the guys that determine what's in the code, uh, what contributions coming from the community are of sufficient quality and, and standards to be incorporated into a release. Uh, and then they make a vote on that release. It's a, that's the, the governance process. John Murphy is uh, establishing the I2B2 PMC, so that'll be a focus of what we're doing on Thursday. Uh, Paula Viak is uh, pulling together the I2B2 Transmark uh, PMC, uh, and we're also focusing on the development of the uh, Open Bell PMC. So these are four PMCs that we're bringing together. But this is what we're here to, to help facilitate. Uh, Diane, as our VP of Operations, works to provide infrastructure. Um, one of the key things we have um, is an IBM Power 8 platform that was donated to the foundation. I think we have, what, about 96 CPUs, a few terabytes of RAM. Uh, it's a pretty nice system. It's uh, hosted for us at the Michigan Institute for Data Sciences, and that's a platform that's available for us uh, in collaboration uh, to work and, and drive our programs forward. I know right now they're working on uh, getting uh, Transmart plus Arvados on the IBM up and running. So that's a pretty interesting project. Uh, I think we talked a little bit about the projects there. Uh, another key aspect, how many people are here from, from vendors today? Excellent, excellent. So one of the key things for us is that we really want to stimulate the vendor community. We want to have our vendors involved and part of the process. Uh, that's really what helps make these platforms uh, become standard is when you have a group of vendors that are willing to put in the time and effort uh, to, to add to the platforms, to go and work with, with the groups that may not be as skilled as the groups represented in this room, but still want to use the platforms, they support the platforms, they, they donate to the platforms. And we really want to facilitate that. And to do that, we've developed a partnership program. Uh, so we have our, our, our commercial and vendor partners that, that are part of our, our foundation. Um, we have multiple par partnership levels to help them get involved and engaged. Um, it opens up channels of collaboration, and I encourage people to support our partners. Um, but I think it's a, it's a very important aspect of what we do. So given that I got the high sign 10 minutes ago, and I could keep going for a while, I do have a sunny slide which tells me I have a sign. Because access done, we can't go over there. So I, I, I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I think this is going to be a great couple of days. We're really excited. It, it took a, a lot of effort 
on the part of our, our team and our board and our stakeholders uh, to pull this effort together. Um, I think it prepares us for a great era of growth. One of the great signs for me is that this symposium was oversubscribed. We had to turn people away. Um, we'll try and plan for bigger next year um, because we don't want to turn anybody away. Um, but I think overall, uh, what we have is a, an open source software foundation that's really starting from a great uh, uh, nucleus with the I2B2 platform, with the additions of all the analytical capabilities of how to transform, adding pieces like Arbatos to it. And we look forward to working with you and, and, and continuing to build this community. So thank you for coming. Thank <laughs> you.